on the problem like this, what we have is 4 cosine squared minus 3 equals 0. Now, unlike simplifying or unlike verifying, now what we want to do is find the values of theta that are going to make this equation true. So just like you guys did before, a lot of times if you guys get stuck when you're trying to simplify or you're trying to verify, when you get stuck, does anybody remember what I told you guys to do? One thing you can do if you get stuck with those, with those functions, you can yeah, just use variables. Forget about the, the functions. Just convert this to variables. So instead of doing cosine, let's do 4x squared minus 3 equals 0. So how would you solve this? You'd use your inverse operations, right? You'd add 3, then you get 4x squared equals 3. Divide by 4, divide by 4. x squared equals 3 over 4. Then you take the square root, and you have x equals um, plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Right? Guys, it's the exact same thing with the cosine of theta. All right? So in this case, you add the 3. 4 cosine squared of theta equals 3. Divide by 4. Cosine squared of theta equals 3 over 4. Take the square root. Take the square root. Cosine of theta equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. OK? Now that's the easy part. We're not done yet, because we haven't found the values of theta that make that equation true. All we did is we just found out what cosine of theta is going to equal for that equation. So now, as I mentioned, this unit circle thing is coming back. We've got to go back and remember our unit circle. So um, I'll draw the whole unit circle, because we're going to need it for this. All right. It is. It's not bad. So if you guys look at the first quadrant, if you guys remember, there's three important angles that we talked about in that first quadrant. First one is pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. First point, we add square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2. 1 half, comma square root of 3 over 2. Right? Now remember, the cosine of an angle the cosine of any angle, when you have a point that's on the unit circle, represents your x-coordinate. Now, I know we have plus or minus, but in that first quadrant, quadrant for what angle does cosine, the x-coordinate, equal the square root of 3 over 2? Yes, Megan, which one? Exactly. Thank you very much. Does anybody else have another? Yes. Pi over 6. You guys can see in this example, my x-coordinate is pi, pi halves over 6. And that's it. That's the only time in that first quadrant, right? So we can say that theta, one solution of theta, is pi over 6. All right? But ladies and gentlemen, that's not in this unit circle. That's not the only time that my x coordinate is going to be pi over 6. Because remember, I can reflect this angle over the x-axis. And at this angle, I have square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. All right? So now I know that works for pi over 6, but it also works for this angle. Right? So I need to think, well, what is, you know, what is that angle again? Well, we know that all the way around a circle is 12 pi over 6. That is 1 pi over 6 less. So we could also say it's at 11 pi over 6. Right? Does that kind of make sense? You can add them all the way you want if you want. Um, but the next thing is we took plus or minus. So now we need to look at the negative. So that means we need to look at, well, what happens when these angles are reflected over here? So this one is negative square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. And this angle is negative square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. Now I just need to determine to find the rest of my solutions. I just need to determine what are those values. Well, we know that halfway around a circle is 6 pi over 6 in terms of if I broke it down into 6. So one angle up is going to be 5 pi over 6. And 1 sixth extra is going to be 7 pi over 6. OK? Does everybody kind of understand where I went with that? OK. Now, here's where everything's going to get a little bit confusing. All right. So does everybody have the units? No, I'll wait for this. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this is the correct answer. Sometimes I'm going to ask you for find all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. 
this is 0 all the way around is 2 pi, right? So if I ask you to solve for this between 0 and 2 pi, these are going to be your four solutions, OK? Now, one thing we know, though, about, um, one thing we know about the sine and cosine graph and the, tri and the tangent graph is let's say we have the graph. We know that, what is this, cosine? So cosine looks like this. That is what we call one period, right? One period is the, is the distance that it takes the graph to repeat itself. Remember when we did coterminal angles and we could keep on wrapping our angles? We could keep on going on and on and on forever, right? The reason being is because this graph keeps on doing this, right? Yes? It never stops. The graph continues on and on. So if I ask you, hey, find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, that's your answer. But if I ask you to find all the solutions, I'm going to erase this, OK? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, shoot. Why did I do that? That's what I need. All right, so we have this angle, that angle, that angle, and that angle. I'll erase this. OK, so we know the graph continues on and on and on forever. All right? So, but if I ask you to find all of the solutions, that's between 0 and 2 pi. OK, those are the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. If I say find all of the solutions, OK, what I want you guys to understand is, all right, so here's one solution, right? That's one angle pi over 6. Can I find the coterminal angle of that? Yeah, you can also do 6. And then you can go around, right? And how many times can we keep on going around? Infinite many times, right? So therefore, what I can say is theta equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Because 2 pi, remember, is the distance all the way around circle. So I can keep on adding 2 pi. And when I add 2 pi, I get exactly back to the same angle, which is going to have the exact same x coordinate as square root of 3 over 2, which is going to have the exact same solution. But I can keep on adding 2 pi. I, can't, I can add it once. I can add it twice, three, four times. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a variable r to represent how many times I can add it. Okay? Then I can do that with all, my, all of my functions. We know that this graph is a solution. But now. That ang this angle right here is a solution as well. And you can just keep on going around and around. So what you're going to do is take every single one of your angles and add your add revolutions. All right? So you just keep on adding revolutions. You might say, all right, well, that's simple enough. Just take whatever the answers are between 0 and 2 pi. And add, and add 2 pi r, right? But we can actually even make this more simplified, all right? No. If you look at this, we know here's the angle, right? All right? Well, guys, from here to here, what is that distance? Pi, right? So if I add from, go from here, if I have, here's my solution, to go from this one, the next solution is just going to be pi, right? Or then, so if that's from, um, so from here to here is just pi. So then if I add pi again, I get to that one. So rather than adding 2 pi for this one and 2 pi for this one, if I just add pi to this angle, it takes me to that angle. If I just add pi again, it takes me to that angle. So I can actually combine these two angles. So I can just say theta equals pi over 6 plus pi r. Because when I add pi, that takes me to 7 pi r. Right? No? Questions? Ask questions. It's OK. It's OK. Do, I lo lo do, I, do you understand these? Yes. OK. So all right, so you understand this is a solution, right? The next solution is over here. And then the next solution is over here. But the distance from this, this angle to this angle is pi, because all the way around would be 2 pi. So what I'm saying is, if I take this angle, which is pi over 6, and I add pi to it, that now takes me to 7 pi over 6. So I don't need to write 7 pi over 6 again. Because by just adding pi, that gives me pi over 6, or gives me 7 pi over 6. So what I'm saying, I'm trying to simplify this. 
So now let's go to 11 pi, um, let's go to 5, 5 pi over 6. So the same thing, if I go to 5 pi over 6, right, you can keep on adding 2 pi. There's no problem with that. Keep on adding 2 pi. However, if I just add pi to this, that now takes me to 11 pi over 6. So what I'm trying to say is instead of writing, guys, 11 pi over 6 and 5, and 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi, if I just add pi to 5 pi over 6, that takes me to 11 pi over 6. So what I'm doing is I'm combining my solutions in simpler terms. So therefore, I can just write 5 pi over 6 plus pi r. By writing it in this format, this now covers all of my solutions. This covers all my solutions as well, but it's redundant. Okay? So this, this is correct. This is simplified correct. And this would only be correct between 0 and 2 pi. Yes and then yes. Will you ask on like a test for the simplified part of it? Or would you if I ask you for find all the solutions, I'm going to want the simplified version. Yes. OK. OK? No? OK. You guys want to do a factoring one? No, you do not need to graph it. But what